A diagnosis of diabetes at a young age is really challenging, both for the young patient and for the family. The Department of Pediatrics here provides a good multidisciplinary approach in order to make things easier. The staff are amazingly wonderful and supportive. Every time, you know, I think I'm going to come in, they're going to tell me off because I've done appallingly with this, this past few months and yet they still say look what can we do to help you bring this down and help you manage this a bit better. I couldn't ask for a more supportive team. Diabetes has always been the main research theme of the Department of Paediatrics in the University of Cambridge and we're interested in improving the way that their insulin is delivered and the ease with which they live with diabetes and trying to prevent the early progression of diabetes. The Department of Paediatrics has very close links with the Institute of Metabolic Science. In that facility we have our paediatric clinic which is adjacent to the adult clinic. The Institute of Metabolic Science has been an opportunity to bring together clinicians delivering clinical care in both adult and children's diabetes together with scientists and clinical scientists working on metabolic disease from bench science all the way through to population-based science. We also have access to the National Institute for Health Research Clinical Research Facility, which provides 24-7 access for research studies, excellent equipment for doing body composition, clamp studies, overnight observation studies. Having a wide network of uh, patients within a clinical network is uh, incredibly important for, for supporting our research. The Department of Paediatrics uh, has access to the National Institute for Health Research, uh, Clinical Research Network. And in addition, we have a clinical research network giving us access to around 3,000 uh, young people with type 1 diabetes. I've always wanted to give blood, but as a diabetic, the rules don't allow it. So I then take part in studies so that at least I can be giving something back. I'd love it if they turned around in 10 years' time and said, we found the cure for diabetes. Without research, you're not going to get that. Over many years, we've been developing closed-loop insulin delivery systems, and the most recent study cloud is actually in newly diagnosed patients. We started the research into the closed loop about 10 years ago uh, with the support of the JDRF, and now we are sending people home to, um, to use the system. Closed loop technology is where you have the pump, obviously, and you have a sensor, which is like a little shell shape that clips in, and then every 10 minutes we'll give you insulin to try and bring correct your levels to the perfect one. We have been engaged in the cloud study um, for about one and a half years. It tests whether using the closed loop can prolong the honeymoon in type 1 diabetes. So we are improving glucose control, possibly reducing the stress on the beta cells and seeing whether um, at the end of one year we can see improvement in C-peptide secretion. I wasn't really sure if it's something I wanted to do, but my mum said to me, if you do this, it might help if your children have diabetes because then they don't have to inject themselves and it's much easier to use. One of our major studies has been ADDIT, which is the Adolescent Diabetes Intervention Trial, which looks at trying to prevent complications during adolescence. We've discovered that we can identify those at risk as young as 10 to 16 years of age. So over the last few years, we've utilized that observation to recruit high-risk people to an intervention with statins and ACE inhibitors. I do worry about the sort of the complications that can come with diabetes. It is nice to know that with the added study, learning more about those complications, hopefully I'm helping to manage those complications. It showed firstly that those drugs can be used in teenagers safely, but perhaps more importantly that our predictions based on protein in the urine at 10 to 16 actually do predict complications over the next two to four years. I was involved since the beginning of the study, so this has been a great opportunity for me to uh, learn skills in research. The studies in children with type 1 diabetes, international collaboration is absolutely essential. For ADDIT, we went out to Canada and Australia to get sufficient number of patients screened and into the intervention studies. The final area that we're involved in is the prevention of diabetes. And we're doing that in collaboration with a very large consortium in Europe. 
Inogia is a European consortium with the aim to understand better the development of type 1 diabetes so we can in the future provide better treatment, personalized treatment for type 1 diabetes. We aim to recruit newly diagnosed patients and family members who haven't developed the disease. My sister was diagnosed about three or four years ago and as part of that, they kind of did a background screening of all my family members. When I was diagnosed, I got offered the opportunity to be part of Enodia. When we recruit participants into the study, we collect information about their medical history, also the family medical history. We also regularly collect blood samples. Every three months I've come to the hospital to have kind of a full blood test and then every month I have at home I do blood spots. To only give up like an hour and a half a month is really no biggie. The ultimate goal of Inodia is to find novel biomarkers that will help us personalise the treatment of type 1 diabetes and ultimately prevent type 1 diabetes. The very broad range of research that's being carried out here and the facilities we have mean that research over the next five to ten years is going to continue to be very productive and will remain a centre of excellence for children's diabetes research.